With Halloween right around the corner, I thought it would be a great idea to talk about the scariest aspects of being a field service engineer. Welcome back to Untitled Label, where we strive for greatness through optimization. If you're new here, welcome to the channel and I hope you stick around. If you do enjoy this content, consider subscribing and like at the end of the video if you actually found this valuable. If you're a current subscriber, thanks for coming back and checking out this new video. I hope you enjoy it and I hope you consider sharing with someone else that might consider this useful as well. Now with the housekeeping out of the way, let's get into today's video. The two topics I'm going to focus on for this video are going to be the equipment and on the other side, the people that have the equipment. When it comes to these two aspects of the job, I think these are going to be the most stressful or for this holiday season coming up, the most scary. The equipment that you work on might be somewhat complicated and cumbersome. However, with good training, you're going to be able to pick this stuff up and you're going to be able to do well on the job. Now, it's not a perfect environment whenever you're out in the field. You do your training in labs that are usually pretty calm. There's no customers hovering over you. There's not a lot of outside factors that are going to be impacting your work. But whenever you're at a customer site, you have customers, you have other people that are there. Uh, you might be in the clean room where you're fully gowned up. So there's a lot of different variables that can come with the job that could make this a little bit harder. Let's say you get out to the field and you're having some trouble with something that you're working on. Uh, one thing that we developed for our region, for the guys that I work with in my region, we have a group chat. So within this group chat, we're able to message each other or reach out to each other if we're ever um, handling a situation. If we ever encounter a situation that we haven't seen before or something just isn't going right. I think with the combined knowledge and the sheer amount of experience that uh, the guys that I work with, the guys and girls that I work with, uh, one way or another, we're able to figure out what issues we're having or issues that you're going to encounter. Now, don't panic. You're going to have a nice support system. For me, for the company that I work for, I get pretty adequate training. Um, the people that give the training, I could always reach out to them. So if that's something you can do as well, let's say you're stuck working on something, reach out to the people that give you training. But before you do that, I think it's extremely important to, while you're in training, make sure you take good notes. I'm an advocate of taking good notes, making sure you write down as much information as you can. Even if you don't understand, tell them, hey, slow down, can you repeat that again? So step one, while you're in training, make sure you take good notes. Now, when you're on the customer site, that doesn't make it any better because it's still high stress, you're stressing out, you're freaking out, you don't know what to do. But try to remain calm, see what's going on, run through your protocols or whatever that you have regarding the equipment as far as troubleshooting goes, and just remain calm and you'll be okay. In summary, the equipment can be scary, can be intimidating, However, as long as you have a good support system and you have people that you can reach out to, taking into account you took the proper precautions, you did the right training, you wrote down the right notes, you took down a lot of information, um, you're gonna have a good support system that you can reach out to and get help if you're ever stranded. Now, the second part of the scariest part about being a, a field service engineer is gonna be the people that you interact with. And by that, I mean your customers. The customers I interact with in Texas are pretty laid back. They're pretty cool. Um, I try to create a professional but friendly personality to interact with them. In my opinion, i rather have a nightmare piece of equipment than a nightmare customer. Easy, hands down. Um, reason why, if the equipment is down, something's not working right, at the end of the day, you're going to figure out something. People are a little bit harder to gauge, interact with. They will say something in your face, ha, huh? everything's good, but little do you know, behind your back, it's not so good. Now, if you can find, I don't know, some common ground between the customer, uh, that definitely helps out with breaking any kind of barriers that might be there. Um, you come on site, you're here to do a job, but let's say something, you're coming in for a repair. Uh, it's not the best of conditions that you wanna show up, but you can turn that negative situation uh, into something positive. Um, personally, I have seen that before, uh, so it is definitely something that anyone can do. Dealing with difficult customers is a little bit, um, it's hard to give advice as to what you should do. Uh, always try to remain professional. 
uh, be courteous, and just try to understand where they're coming from. That's literally the best advice I can give as far as um, de-escalating uh, the situation. So people are a little bit hard to gauge uh, when it comes to this profession, but as long as you're professional, you do your work as you're supposed to, and you're timely, stuff like that, it really goes a long way with making a good impression on your customers. I really hope you guys found this video entertaining or helpful, or both. If you did, consider subscribing if you haven't yet, and share this video with someone that might find this helpful as well. With that said, I'll catch you on the next one.